So next, let's talk about adding effects to your animation. So here I have a little frame by frame fire that I drew. It's looking a little lackluster. Let's add some effects to it. So you'll see I have three layers. I have my fire yellow color, my orange color, and then the soot on the ground. So in order to add an effect to both of these layers, I'm going to shift select both yellow and orange, right click and group that selection. So now I have them both in a group so I can treat them as one layer instead of two. So to add an effect to a layer, I can right click on it, go to insert effects, and here are all the effects that I can add. So let's add transparency first, just to give an example. So to see the effect of your animation, you want to view it in the render view. Right now we're in OpenGL, which is this gray flower here, which is where we usually work. But for previewing what our effects are going to look like, let's click the render view. So now you can see that our fire is 50% transparent. So let's say we wanted to animate this effect. So down here in our timeline, we have our transparency, which is attached to our fire group. And then we have these plus buttons here. So if I click the plus on transparency, we'll see all the parameters of this effect. And over on the right, under our parameters, we can see it's set to 50%. If you don't see the parameters, it's this little tiny button underneath your timeline here. So you can click that to show or hide parameters. So animating an effect is the same as using your motion keys. So I can set a keyframe here, go to frame 10, set a keyframe there. And then with my animate button turned on, I can set my transparency at frame 10 to be zero, which means it'll be fully opaque. And at frame one, I can set my transparency to be 100. So you can see my fire starts invisible and then with every frame gets more and more opaque. So that's how you animate effects. And the same thing with motion keys, you can also do easing on these. So that's how to animate an effect. If I wanna get rid of an effect, I can just click on the transparency layer right here and click this minus button and it'll go back to normal. Let's add another effect. Let's right click our layer, go to insert, effects, and let's click on blur. So right now it looks like nothing's happened. And if we click the plus on our blur effect, we can see it has a radius of zero. So if we want a blur, we have to enter a higher number. Let's do two. So now we have a fire with a little bit of blur. So it looks a little bit softer. If you want to preview how this looks in animation, you can click this render and play button here, which has the yellow star. Normally to play an animation, you'd play this play button here, but you can see my effects are not showing because I'm in OpenGL view. So if I click render and play, then that will open up a new window where I can play my animation and see how the final render looks. And that's how you add effects to your animation. Pretty simple. Another useful effect is the cutter. The cutter can be used as a way to mask out different parts of your animation. So to use the cutter, I'm gonna create a new layer and call it mask. Then I'm gonna take my green and I'm just going to draw in a simple shape just for an example. And I'll fill it in. And now I'll go back to my fire effects, right click on our layer, go to insert, effects, and select cutter. And then on my cutter, I'm going to click on the plus to see its properties. And then you'll see a mat down here. And it says to drop a layer right here. So we're going to do that. We're going to take our mask layer, then click and drag and drop it right on the mat. And now you'll see our fire has been cut out based on the green shape that we drew. So if we frame forward, we'll see it disappears. Well, our mask only lasts for one frame. So like with most of our other stuff, we wanna extend that exposure by pressing F5. So now our mask holds for the entire length of the animation. And if we wanted this mask to be inverted, for example, if we wanted only the green stuff to show and everything else to be invisible, then we can double click on our cutter layer right here and that'll bring up its properties. And there's this little inverted check mark. So if we click that, our mask is now inverted. In the next section, we'll talk about adding a camera to your scene and animating it.